Carl joins us now in studio to talk a little bit about salvaging and DIYing older furniture. You're such a pro at it. You Plus go out muscle. there. Oh, yeah, man. You find <laughs> these pieces, and most of us would look at it and say, I don't know, what can I do with that? Whereas you'll look at it and say, I can fix this. I can make this work. Well, and you know what? I, I went on the hunt with Ursula in the storage yes. locker, and that to me was a whole new experience, which I loved. I usually am able to spot a piece, mm -hmm. but this was rolling the dice on not knowing what we were going to get, right? Yeah. In the locker. It was kind of like Christmas. You know, sometimes you open a diamond <laughs> bracelet, sometimes you open a drawer and there's dirty socks. So right. you roll the dice on the whole situation. But we spotted this little table. Well, actually, we've got the before picture of it again. And as I said in the tape, potential. It was very mm -hmm. cute. And what I loved about it was there wasn't a lot of inherent value in the state that it was currently in. Yes, but which is I, always what you're looking for. Always so what I'm looking for. Here. When you're DIYing, you're thinking about how you can add value to it. So in this case, I knew right away it was a very cute, petite little table, yeah. um, had a lot of opportunity of where it could go and what it could become. So for me, as always, a fresh coat of paint saves the day. It does wonders. It does save the day. And mm -hmm. again, because there wasn't a lot of value, I added value in personality. And I've got the after down here. And it just has a fresh coat oh, of a bird's egg color on there. And then you can see I've done a little bit of stenciling on it that says good reads. Yeah, very So I've nice. given it a purpose. This for me is going to go in my guest bedroom right. as a nightstand and tucking in some cute little books and magazines for when my guests come over to stay. Now when you see a piece like that, the before piece, do you, do you immediately assign a this is what I need it for before you bring it home? Or do you say I'm going to fix it up and then figure it out? If it's a piece for me, I always have to assign function. Good. Always. Yeah. I and feel then, like that's the better thing to do, otherwise it's you true. just add another piece You of... have to be practical about it and yeah. then comes the fashion. Function, fashion, right. you really have to balance. Okay. So it's making it then work in the space. If if you have a place for it. If you don't follow that rule, then it ends up in my garage, which is full and you can't walk in at the moment. Yeah. I could be on hoarders, whereas Ursula's on storage wars. There's a whole other show for you. <laughs> um, but there are some pieces like that beautiful dovetail dresser that we saw yes. that has inherent value the way it is. You almost don't want to touch it. It was already beaten up. It almost tells a story. Mm -hmm. If it's damaged, there's certain things that you can do. There's really simple little um, the wood crayon fillers that you can get just to touch up oh, really uh, small little marks or scrapes or yeah, scratches on there. Um, when you, we get into refinishing, I always say to people, if you think there's any chance at all of it having some value, go and have it appraised first. Look for those Before details like the it. dovetailing. Look for any stamps or markings on it because mm -hmm. you could actually be taking value away if you refinish it. Got it. For me, I gave that little table a quick sanding. Yeah. I actually sprayed primer and sprayed paint on top of the table instead of rolling to give it more of a factory finish. Yeah. A quality finish, higher value. Okay. Right? It doesn't look so rickety as a DIY yeah. project. Right. Now, I also added the little stencil detail. I have this new product I want to pass along to you. So what is this take? now? Tell me what's, what you think is a little bit different about this. Oh, it sticks. It's sticky. Yeah. Measure it. So this is measureit.ca, measure it tape. And what I love about this is when I did the stenciling on the front of the table, I was able to use this measuring tape right across the front that sticks. And I can hold this up mm -hmm. so you can see. And then I was able to place my stencil so I could map out perfect Smart. spacing for all of the letters. So if you are DIYing and doing a little bit of added detail like that, which again adds some personalized value, yeah. a product like that will save you a lot of hassle. Cool. A lot of hassle. Now, if you saw, in, if you remember in the tape, Ursula and I dragged out those big canvases of artwork. Right. They weren't so Van Gogh's. A, that's a tricky one, though. When you've, when you've got tricky. artwork and it's been maybe slightly damaged, or you've, you, you, but you want to keep it. Absolutely. What do you do about well, that? Well, and in that case, it, it was artwork that there was less value in what was on the canvas yeah. than the canvas itself. So you almost just want the canvas. You just want the canvas. Mm -hmm. And for me, I buy artist canvas quite often. I actually did a little bit of research for Ursula and found out that those canvases, they were five feet by eight feet. Mm -hmm. I could barely see over the top even with heels. Yeah. They retail for about $200 brand new each and there were two of them oh. so cha-ching a nice little score in the locker right. now because they needed some work done to them uh, they you probably she wouldn't get retail value but it, it's actually a very simple process you want to lightly sand any finish so stuff it up a bit so okay. don't use an industrial sander on it because you'll put too much pressure and it is quite soft a canvas and then just two coats of primer over top primer is basically like is an artist gesso here? it's just primer oh wow that you put on so when you're buying canvases at a retail store you're getting them pre gessoed gesso is essentially like a chalk and binder finish that they put on the canvas so it's not porous and doesn't suck in the paint right when you reprime you're refinishing that surface and it's ready for new fresh paint to go on so I would think she could get a couple hundred dollars for those canvases that, that is were in there. excellent it's reusing what you have right and 
And then there were a couple of instances in there that she found pieces that were damaged. Yeah. And I came across this piece, whether you have pieces at home that are damaged, or this one I scooped at uh, HomeSense, um, got a great deal on it in their, in their damage section. It has just a hole in the bottom here. Yeah. What I've done is when you flip it over, it's just adhered to a backer frame with staples. So I've basically just removed the staples with my screwdriver and my pliers here. I'll take the last few out. And then what you can do is you can re-sculpt the size of your artwork. So we oh, can get rid of this. Smaller. All you then need to do is trim off the damaged portion. Right. It doesn't have to be a perfectly clean cut either. So again, if you've got pieces around the house, reuse them. And then if you go to a store like Curry's Craft Store, you mm -hmm. can buy the frames that just slide together and you can remount it yourself just using That's your staple so guide. smart. So don't throw anything out. Yeah, at you're all. really Reuse. good at that. No. Reuse. You are saving your family loads of cash. Your well, husband must and love hoarding. you. And you're a hoarder, but whatever. We still love you.